Hey y'all, I'm Betsy from Happily Ever After Center and we are in London. It's kind of hard to tell right now, but we are staying at the Royal National Hotel, downtown London. Mom and I are going all kinds of stuff this week. Today is day one, so we have two days just in London before we get on our cruise. So today we actually booked an excursion to Stonehenge. I will put all that information down below, but I thought I'd bring you with me. So we're waiting for our Uber since the Metro, everything's on strike right now. We are waiting for our Uber. It's going to take us to the meetup with Stonehenge, the group we're going with. And then it's, mom said a couple hour drive to get to Stonehenge, right mom? Mm -hmm. They're here, our Uber is here. So we're gonna go. All right, you ready to go? I'm ready. Let's go. We gotta find a place to cross. We're going across the street there. Okay, so we made it. It was about 19 minutes from our hotel here via Uber, since the Metro is still on strike. And it was what, like 15, 15 pounds? It was 14 pounds and then two dollars. $2 as a tip. Yeah. So 16 pounds total. Um, but this is it. Mom booked it at the Evan Evans agency on Viator. So, um, and we have our second tour tomorrow, which is to the Warner Brothers Harry Potter lot through this company as well. They had a lot of different options on Viator.com, but we're here. What time is it now? 8.57 at 9.15. Our bus is supposed to be here to take us to Stonehenge. So this is their little waiting area. And we're just going to wait here for a minute. Okay. So we're on the bus. So it's like a Charter kind of bus, and it's I believe two hours approximately to Stonehenge, and then we have two hours there. They gave us a little audio tape so we can listen to the tour. The one that we picked is a half day tour, and it's self guided, so you can just kind of walk around and look at what you want to do. But for now, we are we're on the bus, so we're gonna drive to Stonehenge. Are you excited, Mom? Always, always. She said she wasn't excited a minute ago. Being on the bus more exciting than the waiting room. <laughs>
Okay, y'all, so we just got off our bus and we're walking over. So there is a visitor center, um, a little gift shop and a cafe. And then they said it's about a 20 minute walk to Stonehenge or they have shuttles that you can take. So I think we're gonna take a shuttle because it is all open out here and sunny, sunny, sunny. Very verbal bird. I am white, white. <laughs> so we're going to go find the shuttle. This is just a little like, information kind of place. I think this is just like a little information kind of place. So I think we got to go around here to find the visitor center and the shuttles. Let's see. Yep. There's a sign. Cafe, shop, shuttle bus this way, walk, and the pate. There's the pate. You gonna go throw your trash away? Intermission. Okay, so now we're gonna go down and you can see where the regular car parking is. And at the end of this path, I believe, is where the shuttle bus is and the cafe and the everything. So let's head down and check it out. I wonder why they put the visitor center so far away from it. Maybe so when you're there, you don't see the visitor center. So this right here is the visitor center and the cafe. And then you can see the shuttle down there. I'm not sure if there's a line over there we have to get in or what. So we're just going to go check it all out and then we'll be on the shuttle. Welcome on board the visitor shuttle bus to Stonehenge. Your journey will take about five minutes, passing through the rolling landscape of the World Heritage Site. For your safety, if you are standing, please hold on to the rails at all times. On the way, you'll be able to spot some of the other prehistoric sites that make up a complex of monuments surrounding Stonehenge. Some of the monuments date from the former time of Stonehenge, some from the same time and some are built after construction work at Stonehenge End. All of the sites described are on the map in the free orientation method. The National Trust owns and cares for more than 800 hectares of the ancient landscape which you're traveling through. Thanks to their extensive program of converting plowed fields into pasture, much of this landscape has been returned to grass and has been made accessible to visitors. What did this landscape look like when Stonehenge was built? It actually looked quite similar to today. It was mostly open grassland, used by prehistoric people to graze their cattle, with some scattered trees and shrubs, particularly in the river valleys. Much of the rest of Southern England was more dense and forested at the time. This might be why people chose to build monuments here on the open shore grass river. The wood on the ridge is known as far wood, and if you'd like to walk part of the way to Stonehenge, you can get up here. Push the bell to let the driver know that you want to head off. There's a pub on the wall to a view pub where there's information about the other monuments you can see and how long it will take to walk to The walks are across rough grassland, so you'll need suitable shoes. When the first earthwork enclosure was constructed at Stonehenge in about 3000 BC, this landscape already had some large and important early monuments. Some of these are still visible as earthworks, but others have been found flat. The greater, or Stonehenge Cursus, is an enormous rectangular earthwork defined by a bank and ditch about 1.7 miles in length and runs on the left hand side parallel with the road you're traveling. On this left side of the bus, you should be able to see some low grass mats in view. These are the Cursus Valleys. A group of 19 early Bronze Age burial mounds 
which were built a few hundred years after construction work at Stonehenge. This is just one of several parish cemeteries located in the area. It seems to have been important to be buried on the site of the Sydney place at that time. The curses models are strung out in a line alongside the much older Stonehenge curses, which suggests that it too still held some importance. Some of the barrows were excavated by William Cunnington in the early 19th century, and many contained cremations, some of them accompanied by gravedoors, such as beads and bronze studies. Soon, you should be able to see Stonehenge coming up ahead. Please take care as you leave the house and ensure you have all your personal belongings with you. Don't forget that you can set up for a walk in the landscape around Stonehenge afterwards if you wish. We hope you enjoy your visit. Okay, y'all, so we made it to Stonehenge. There's a lot of people here, but you can get pretty close to the stones. There's little uh, ropes, but you can walk kind of all over the place and um, right up to the stone. So we're just going to kind of walk around. We have a little audio kind of tour. We're going to listen to that and see, see what there is to see. All right, y'all, so we have this little audio tour. So as you walk around, you can see this is number seven. Down there's number eight. They gave us these maps. So as you can see, there's, a, there's different numbers on the maps. So, people, people. You still listening, Mom? You still listening? Okay, so what we learned is with these little guys, headphone goes on the side, make sure it's on on the top, on and off, you turn the volume all the way up, then how you make it work is up top is all the little flags, so you're going to push it against whatever language you speak, and then say this is number seven, if I push it against number seven, it starts telling me all about these Aubrey holes right here, which I guess there's a whole bunch of them around the entire exterior that used to have pillars. So it's just going to tell you as you walk around the history that you're seeing, which is nice without a guide. Okay, so we just got off the shuttle, finished walking around Stonehenge. 
Stonehenge. And we are now going to go check out the gift shop and then grab lunch at the cafe. We have a little less than an hour before we have to get back on the bus. So I don't know what we're going to get. If we're going to get anything. We saw a picture we might get for my brother, but not sure yet. We'll find out. Get your little skittle set. <laughs> See, I think that's cool. Yeah, that's, I think that's too much for Will. My brother is a pain in the rear to buy things for. That one's not bad. I think he might like the picture more, though. I'm still wearing my sunglasses. All right, we're going to look around, and then I'll uh, bring you back outside. Oh, there's your ornaments, Mom. All right, let's see. It's that one's pretty. Metal. Show the camera. I like metal because it won't break. Yeah, me too. These are glass. Those are glass. Oh, I like that one. I don't know. Mom likes to get a Christmas ornament everywhere we go. This one's wooden. I like, I think I like the green ones. <coughs> should I get the same one or should I get the round one? I like the drawing. I like, I wish it was that drawing with the writing. I think I'm gonna get the heart one. I like that it's a heart. Yeah, little bear. All right. This is small. This is small. We're trying not to buy too much that we have to pack in our suitcases. Our suitcases are very full. All right, let's go find that picture. Might be big. See, hopefully they have one that size. Yeah. Was it? Did he buy like that one? This one that we saw outside? I don't know. Yeah, we liked it because he likes white and black. Very, like, two-color kind of dude, but I don't know about the snow. That one's kind of cool. What about the long, skinny ones at the front? Do they have a cool one of those? I think he might like the first one with the lightning on it. We can get him one of the smaller ones. That way if he, uh, if he doesn't like it, it wasn't that much. <laughs> okay, y'all. So here is everything we got from Stonehenge. We didn't get that much. Obviously, Mom and I got our Christmas ornaments. They're so cute. They're very cute. They're metal. Mom got this postcard, which is kind of a watercolor-esque kind of look. We got my brother, this one that's very dramatic. And you can tell, of course, that once they they open up, pull it down, Mom, so they can see. It shows the whole picture. It's very dark and moody. So hopefully he will like that one. And then I end up picking this one. I really liked the pink tones in it. I thought that would be pretty on one of my walls. You want to open it up? And I'm not 100% sure. I don't have a lot of wall space left, so I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to frame it the large way or the short way. 
but either way and do something with it so that is everything we bought at stonehenge all right so we're in the cafe got a soda and a sandwich and a piece of cake and mom got smoked salmon and cream cheese is it good we're gonna go ahead and eat okay we're done with our lunch so we're gonna walk back up to the bus and stop at the bathroom because that's always important and then it's two two and a half hours to say right back to london so we are done with stonehenge so what would you say mom did you like this tour would you rather have a guided tour instead of the self-guided one no i like the self-guided and not be corralled into yeah. doing what they want you to do. Because they got to keep everybody together and wait till everybody gets in. And yeah, so I liked it. I, I liked that we were able to go walk all the way around and take as many pictures and videos as we wanted. And then when we were done, we were able to come back and eat lunch and buy our postcards. So, all right, I will. Uh, Probably shoot some more stuff on the bus back from the other side of the road, and then we'll be done with our Stonehenge tour. Found some roses. Look at the rose hips on these. They are so interesting. They look like little radishes to me. That's interesting. We don't have rose hips that big back at our house, huh? We're back, done with the tour, and so we're gonna catch an Uber back to the hotel and uh, get some dinner. But I wanted to show you our bus. So if you take a tour with Evans and Evans, Evan Evans, they have their own coach. Which was very nice because when all of the coaches were lined up in the parking lot at Stonehenge, it was very easy to tell which one ours was because it says, Evan Evans on the side. All right, we got a call for an Uber, so see y'all later.